Welcome to Five Star Conversations, where we chat with hoteliers making a difference to the hospitality industry. And today I have the pleasure of talking with Scott Boys. Welcome, Scott. Hey, Brennan. Great to be here. And thanks for having me on your amazing show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Scott, you've recently had a, um, a new appointment or new promotion. You're now the Senior Vice President of Hotel Operations for Pacific North. Um, and I think that kicked off in December 1. In that role, you are responsible for um, a cause, premium mid-scale and economy brands in uh, New South Wales, the ACT, Queensland and the Northern Territory. So a big chunk of Australia, basically. I also know we were talking off camera, you've been in the industry now for about 31 years and, uh, you know, 28 or so with a core. But I think we, I know I personally forget, you know, I, I, I've known you since you've been at a core in very senior roles, you know, and I don't think about the fact that you started like everybody, you know, at a hotel in a junior role many years ago. Could you just give us a little bit of background on, on your career and how you got to where you are today? Well, thank you. And yes, you're hundred percent right. We all have to start somewhere and uh, it's very exciting to see people go through their journey, and that's one of life's great pleasures watching that in others. Um, for me, I went to the Blue Mountains Hotel School uh, here in, in uh, well, in the Blue Mountains, <laughs> surprisingly <laughs> enough, uh, and uh, finished in 1994. I did a couple of industry placements, so I don't really count them as my first job because you sort of go into a hotel for six months and, and then go back to school, um, but I was very lucky to have um, great hotels to do industry placements in. I actually followed Tish and I are okay. into both of my industry placement roles. So Tish and I have got a friendship that goes back um, three decades. Uh, I worked at the Rest Hotel at Milsons Point, um, which is now a residential uh, apartment complex, and I worked at the Country Comfort at Pennant Hills, um, okay. which um, Mark Ronfeld now operates uh, under his brand. So um, small world. My yeah. first, my first real job was as a night porter at the Novotel Brighton Beach. At a time when I was applying for jobs, I sent out hundreds of letters trying to get a, an opportunity. I got, I, I actually literally sent out 100 letters and I got 99 knock packs. Uh, I still have them, by the way, uh, those letters that I didn't get back. And uh, I got one request for an interview and that was with uh, Laurie Jackson, who was the HR manager at Novotel Brighton Beach. And, uh, she gave me a, a start as a night porter, um, which really involved cleaning and, and making toast and sandwiches for guests. A, an odd combination, yep. uh, but a combination nonetheless. Uh, and from there, my career has just, um, just been incredible. Um, I've loved every second of it. I love hotels. Uh, so I went from Brighton, Brighton Beach, uh, night porter to night audit. I then moved on to the reception desk, uh, I then moved into the Bay Garden Cafe and then from there I got a, a, an opportunity to be part of a national management traineeship with Accor, uh, which then sent me to Cairns. Uh, then I moved to Perth, then back to Sydney, uh, then to Melbourne. And I finished my traineeship in Melbourne at the Sofitel. Okay. And then came back to Sydney and uh, worked at the Darling Harbour Complex as a front office manager. Uh, then I moved to Olympic Park where I'm sitting today as front office manager, and then I moved to McCure Parramatta, which was a, an Accor owned hotel as like a hotel manager, uh, then back to Olympic Park as an EAM. Um, this is my third time at Olympic Park where I am now, so it's kind of weird. Um, back to Olympic Park as an EAM and then went to um, Barossa Valley as GM. That was my first GM posting, which is just incredible. Yes. Uh, then uh, I was lucky enough to be um, handed the responsibility of a regional manager for South Australia Northern Territory. Uh, then I did the same role in Victoria and uh, Tasmania uh, and then uh, here to my current role, which has been a few iterations. I, I came here as a regional manager that moved into a, a vice president of operations and now senior vice president of operations with Queensland Northern Territory added, um, but all wonderful jobs and I'm very blessed. That's amazing. And it is such a small world, um, as you said. Um, I know Tish well. And, um, yeah, it's, it's such a small world. Small well, world. Why hotels? What what drew you to hotels? And, you know, when did you discover the, the passion for hotels? 
Uh, I still remember falling in love with hotels. It was literally on the first day at the Blue Mountains Hotel School when Philip Neville, who was one of our lecturers, was talking about what the industry was and uh, the history of the industry, what the industry represents, the importance of the industry to people. Yep. Um, I was hooked. Um, pre that, I wasn't so hooked. So <laughs> I was a bit of a rat bag at school. I, I, I mean, not not in a bad way. I was yeah. just, um, I just enjoyed my friends. I enjoyed playing footy, like rugby. Uh, I enjoyed working at Macca's, um, okay. but I didn't, I didn't enjoy schoolwork. And um, my friends and and I we were tight and close. We had a lot of fun but probably didn't really apply ourselves as well as we could have. It's actually one of my great regrets now. And I, as a parent and um, my wife and I, we try really hard with our kid, our two boys uh, who are very much like me um, <laughs> sort of say, hey, you like, don't, you know, let's, let's focus on the, there's time for that, but let's focus on this. So going through school, didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I loved Maccas. I knew I loved people. I love um, my social network. I knew I loved playing rugby I knew I didn't like doing schoolwork and um I was I still remember I was sitting at the the breakfast counter at eight um Peterson Place North Rocks having a, a probably a bowl of Cocoa Pops I knew I definitely had a glass of Milo I think it was Cocoa Pops <laughs> and mum bought in a copy of the Sydney Morning Herald you know the old big broadsheet oh, yeah yeah <laughs> in big and big black lettering in a full page ad, it said it just said no HSC required, <laughs> and and then it had very small writing. Blue Mountains Hotel Management School opening next year, and uh, I said, "Mum, I'm in. Like, let's go, let's do it." So uh, I enrolled. I got into the Blue Mountains Hotel School. I went through Year Twelve. Probably not a good thing to be enrolled in a hotel school before doing your HSC because it doesn't really incentivise you. I met my now wife. In year twelve, um, at, she was my girlfriend Jenny, and um, and then I and then I got to the Blue Mountains Hotel School for day one, and that falling in love um, moment happened, and I flipped like one eighty. I, I went from being someone who used to go out a lot to partying a lot, um, playing footy to I never went. I very rarely went out. There might be some of my alumni. Uh, watching and it would be untrue to say I never went out but I did work I did study very hard and I worked very hard and I'm I'm proud of my ability to jump into something academically because I didn't have that before doing Blue Mountains and um, the rest is history I, I think that my love of the industry was founded there and and um, I haven't lost it since. That's amazing. Um, similar that really resonates with me as well because I was not particularly good at school but once I got I did um, Victoria University, the hotel management degree. Um, something clicked and and um, I, I did quite well, you know, whereas at school I was just an average student. It was just that, as you said, it's the passion. So you must have been, were you in the first year of, of um, the intake of the Blue Mountains Hotel School? Well, I was in the second year. Tish, Tish was in the first, second half of the year intake. So I was always six months behind Tish. Okay, and I work now with uh, with Charlie Young. He's, a, he's our GM at the airport at the Mantra, and I was budget. He was in the first year. Okay, so um, yeah, small world, small world, <laughs> Brendan. But um, yeah, like um, Charlie was Charlie was the initial year, and there's a there's a few of those those old timers fighting around, and um, yeah, it's lovely to see people doing so well. Uh, it's awesome. It is good. It's good. Scott, is there a, a funny story from your early career, um, either funny or embarrassing, that you'd be happy to share with us on camera? Um, uh, uh, maybe one. One springs to mind. Uh, I'm looking looking out my window. I look down towards uh, what was the Superdome and it's the Kudos Bank Arena and yeah. Aqua Stadium is just here. Um, so this story happened here. Uh, I'm sure he won't mind me telling it, uh, but Mark Ronfeld was the GM here. Okay. Uh, we used to host the ARIA after show party. Like it was a big deal. The most amazing night. Um, we used to, we actually used to put a, a huge uh, like TP over the, over the driveway. We had a stage like 
the um, sneaky sound system has played on that stage and uh, others have got up. Bob Geldof has been on that. Like it was just the who's who of the rock industry would come back to this party and jump up on stage and perform. And we were getting ready for this particular ARIA event. Um, it was the year that Delta made a return after suffering um, from her cancer diagnosis. I think Kylie Minogue was attending the awards and she was back home for the first time in a long time. It was a, and Bob Geldof was here. Like it was a big deal. Yeah. Um, I think Alex Lloyd uh, had that song amazing and was, you know, winning award. Anyway, it's a big, it was a big, it was a big show. And uh, Mark and I had a site inspection here. And uh, a lot of our team were going down to the ARIA um, awards night at the Superdome. I was staying back here to get ready for the party, um, the after show party. So Mark was delayed in going and Mark's wife had already gone down to the ARIAs and all of our team had gone down. Anyway, um, and this, this was at a time when the ARIAs was broadcast live on Channel 10. Like it was broadcast and it was a big deal in lounge. Like people would watch the ARIAs. Yep, yep. So anyway, Mark and I did our site inspection and we'd finished and uh, Mark said, okay, I've got to get down there. Where do I go? I said, look, don't worry. Uh, we used to do limo transfers from here to the show. So all the staff would come and get ready here and then they'd get a limo and then the red carpet on TV. <laughs> so the limos are here, Mark. We'll just get you in a limo. They'll, they'll zip you down and um, drop you down there. You'll get in, no problem. He goes, okay, no problem. Where do I get to go? I said, door, you know, fine. Okay, great. You know, yep, all good. So spoke to the limo guys here and said, okay, we're just going to get Mark down to the after show, uh, to the to the ARIA Awards. Can you please just drop him down there? No problem. Easy, anything for you guys. Great. Just make sure you just drop him, you know, 50 metres down the road. He'll, he'll walk 50 metres. No problem, no problem. Anyway, Mark goes. And about five minutes later, all their radios start going crazy like, what? Who is this? What? Who's that guy? Record exec? Who is he? What's going on? And um. And so what's, is everything okay? They're going, shh, shh, shh. And they're all listening and trying to talk. And <laughs> um, TV people are here going, what, what, what? And uh, anyway, I said to the limo, what's, what's happening? I said, okay, if anyone ever asked you who you put in that limo, you didn't put anyone in any limo. I said, what do you mean? And they said, well, they were all queuing ad breaks on Channel 10 live, waiting for Kylie Minogue to get out of the next limo. And all of a sudden this... Mark Ronfeld, who the hell is he gets out of this limo? <laughs> so Mark's on Channel 10 in every lounge room and he's walking up the red carpet waving and cameras are going and everyone's going, who is this guy? <laughs> it, was Mark, it was Mark Ronfeld. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's very funny. That's a great story. <laughs> that is great party. It was a great party. It was a very good I love it. I love it. Scott. Obviously, you've had lots of mentors in that over the time, but who's someone that inspires you and you've, you've got motivation from and, and sort of why did they inspire you? I think it would be unfair to draw focus and attention on any individual okay. in, our in, our, in our industry. I, I think everyone I get to work with inspire, is inspiring, you know, inspiring in their own way. If I think about three years that we've sort of come through, you know, mm. 19th of March, Ruby Princess drops a 1,000 passengers into hotel rooms all over Sydney and our room attendants just keep coming to work. That's, that's inspiring. Yeah. Um, the GM community of the hotel group that I work for, Accor, dropping grocery deliveries to their team who are out of work um, just to be able to get them through the next week, that's inspiring. Yeah. To draw one more work conclusion, watching leaders really listen and try and understand somebody else's perspective and help another person is inspiring. Watching our hotels try and be these absolute places of safety that are very different to the outside world is inspiring. So I think that's, that's, that's the beauty of our industry. You know, yeah. it's, it's so people, it's so people centric that every day has got inspiration if you go looking for it and if you can see it. Um, and everyone that works in this industry brings inspiration. So I, I, I think the industry itself is inspiring and I'm so blessed to work with the people I work with. Um, even our conversations that we have about IT and watching you light up when you're talking about <laughs> the next big thing, like that's inspiring. That, that gives me hope 
to the future. Like, oh, I believe that you found the next big thing and <laughs> I want to know more. Um, so, like, the industry is, is inspiring. That Where my inspiration comes from yep. is how Sting answered the question when he was asked about his music compared to Bowie's music. Okay. And he said, I don't really... I don't really get into comparisons. Everything I do in my life is to make my kids proud of me and my wife love me. And I try and live my life by that mantra. And, and my wife and my kids are, are everything to me and everything I do is to make them proud. I mean, to make them proud of me and to make, to make them proud to call me a part of their family. Yeah. And I find that if I hold myself to that standard, I mean, that to me is the highest standard. And then I, my role as a leader, my role as a friend, my role as a, somebody else's mentor, my role as a colleague, my role as a hotelier, um, I find it all kind of lines up very nicely under that standard of just trying to, because my kids and my wife, they see, they see the work that I do, you know, phone calls in the car, meetings on the weekend, like, they're part of it. Um, so if I hold myself to that standard that that's me as a person, um, that's the outcome I'm trying to see. I love that. I love that. Um, that's good. Scott, a week or so ago, I asked you if you um, could have anything printed on a T-shirt, what would that be? And I think you've you've got a little satchel there in front of you. It, I do. It says, please do not open until... <laughs> Brendan asked you to. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to open it up, Scott. I think okay. there's some wrapping paper inside as well, so it might be too. Okay. Well, thank you. Yes, it has. It's got okay. very colourful wrapping Happy paper. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. And if you'd like to hold up that. Uh, so what you said, if you could put anything on a T-shirt, it would be I love hotels. So. Obviously, we've just discussed your passion. Is there any other reason why you love hotels? Uh, well, thank you for the shirt. That's <laughs> that's wonderful, and I am going to definitely wear that um, tonight. And bit of fun. I've been working on my biceps too, Brendan, and I think these the sleeve length is suitably short to be able to be called a muscle shirt as well. So thank you. Oh, cool. Thanks very much. <laughs> wear it at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> very very good. Uh, I, I just love hotels. I love hotels. Uh, I think they are. I think they are very special places. I think they are. They are conductors of energy. And um, if you think about why people stay in them, um, they stay in them for special occasions. They stay in them for sad events. They stay in them um, to meet their their next great love. They stay in them to, to farewell a a mum or a dad. They they stay in them because they're apprehensive about um, the cancer treatment they're getting at the local hospital the next day and they stay in them um, for a job interview. Mm. And then we play a role in, in making that all okay and connecting and um, hopefully making someone else's life better having stayed in our hotel and met us. Yep. And I think that, that beautiful uh, coming together of energy when it's done right, there is no better place to be. And yeah. I think hotels change lives. Well, I know hotels change lives because this one I'm sitting in has changed mine. And I know hoteliers change lives because hoteliers I've worked with have changed lives uh, and they've changed my life. And um, people that work in hotels and for each other change lives as well because I, I, I know the people on the other side of this wall have changed my life as well. So... Um, yeah, I, I love hotels. They're special places. And, no, you're so right. They save save lives as well. A, a good friend of mine, I won't mention you on camera, but he works for a core. Um, he had a, an accident at work and um, it was a near-death experience or, and um, the support that he got from a core from you guys was just amazing. You know, he's, he's now back to full health and working again, but it... Um, you know, the support not only for him but his wife and his kids as he was going through that. He just said it's changed his life. You know, he's just indebted forever um, because of, as you said, that compassion, the 
yeah, it's, it's just what hotels are all about, right? Yeah. And, and all jokes aside, whilst it has got great sleeves to biceps, <laughs> I mean, I will, I will wear this with pride. I mean, this, this is, um, yeah, this is, this, is, this is who I am. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate that. I suppose because I am, as you said, um, I love technology um, and I love the fact that, you know, my passion for both technology and hotels, you know, allows me to do what I do. It, it is something really special. We talked about the team there and, um, you know, I think it hasn't always been the case in every hotel, but I think certainly as a result of the pandemic, we've come to appreciate that, you know, the staff experience is just as important as the guest experience these days. Yeah. Um, you know, and and I think I know a lot of hotels have Obviously, we're going through a bit of a staffing issue um, and we need to do things to encourage staff as well and we're training them. What sort of, maybe with a bit of a technology bent on it, are there any things that you're doing from a technology point of view to make the, the life of the team easier or even onboarding easier? Yeah, so I think we have moved past the staffing issue. I think now it's about a skilling issue. Yeah. Um, the big gaps are in workforce are in the main. And, yes, we've still got pockets of um, hotels in particular locations that still need some team members, but we haven't got these big gaps where it's business can't continue or business is interrupted. Um, that's now over, but it's now about skilling. So with that in mind, you know, we've been really focused on how do we, how do we upskill people really efficiently. Uh, I'm so blown away by Microsoft Teams. I think it's a, a really clever platform to be able to get information to people quickly. Mm. Uh, so I, I do use that a lot. And I, I use that to put, um, but we do we do podcasts. Um, I get, I put our podcasts on there, um, podcasts that I think are relevant, um, mm. newspaper clippings, um, Audio book, audio books blow me away. I, I just think that's just the best thing. Um, so I, I tend to use Teams as a bit of a depository for, for people to be able to access external content. Yep. Uh, also, we do all of our meetings on Teams and the ability then to have this integrated platform where you can ask questions on Teams and load documents and files up and, and just make sure everyone's moving forward. Super yep. cool. Uh, we, we discovered Tipsy, Jonathan... Plowright's uh, platform. Yep. Um, and shout out to you, Jonathan. He's a very clever guy. He's developed like Netflix for hotels. It's kind of like all this video content of training material. And we use that. And uh, yeah, we love Tipsy. We think it's a great platform to be able to scale skills based training quickly. It yep. does rely on individuals to be motivated to go and source it and find it and, and, right. um, and do it. But those that are motivated and want to learn, they, they're getting a lot out of Tipsy. Yep. I think, and then I think like things like and maximizing what's already there, like WhatsApp, you know, a great tool to be able to take a photo of something that's best practice and throw it out there. And that inspires everyone else. We, so for example, we really tried hard to animate our lobbies and activate our lobbies for pride. We just wanted to, people were paying big rates in Sydney for that week. We wanted to really bring it to life and yeah. WhatsApp, you know, people just snapping shots and videos and having fun and, it just raised the as the week went on, the bar just went higher and higher and higher as to what people were doing, and um, that's a that's a cool piece of technology um, that I think is possibly underutilized. Yeah, um, I mean everyone uses it, but you know it can it can do more. Um, and then I think I mentioned you know podcasts and audio books. Um, there's so much information out there, and I mean, I've mentioned it on a podcast that I do with a friend of mine. Um, and, and you referred to before, but yeah. that you, that you that Bono book surrender is the next evolution of audio book because it sort of takes this book into a podcast into a record. It's yeah, it's really weird, but it's it's very very effective. Um, I just think we're on the cusp of really cool stuff. There's so many good apps, isn't there? Like, how many good apps do you have in your phone? Um, Peloton, the Peloton app is just incredible. Um, whether you have a Peloton bike or not, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I go, I go on. I can go on, but um, no, I, I love. I'm, I'm naturally inquisitive, and I love when 
exciting stuff comes out and and generally genuinely we try to try and think about how we can apply it in, in our workplace and and try and then run a trial and, and get it in okay no it's a good point so from a hotel technology point of view i know we've talked about it in in, in the past but how do you try and sort of keep up to date with what is going on it's as you said there is so much and i think you when we spoke once you said you know it is really difficult to try and cut through the noise because there are products coming out all the time and if you're not careful you could spend your entire life literally just looking at different products and never get anywhere yeah i think you've got to surround yourself with really good people yep and in like like our relationship you sent me a book um a purple cover book it had 2.0 on it i'm not like, hospitality 2.0 yeah yeah okay so i mean that that book lived on my bedside for four months and i just flicked through it um and and you you mean you, did, you gave it to me and said you got to read this um I've got another another friend in the industry who said you've really got to meet with the Foxtel team and see what they're doing around streaming and yep. and content and be able to provide content. Um, somebody else said, you know, you've really got to have a look at this Peloton. So I think when you've got really good people around mm -hmm. you, they tend to sort of steer you and point you in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, and then you just go looking as well. Um, like I am, I you know, after that steer around Foxtel, meet with Foxtel, see what they're what they're doing, and it's really exciting. It's really good. Um, equally, the Peloton play in the hotel space is really good. Um, your little um, charging, like your wireless charging stations that you've got, they're really good. Yeah. Um, so I haven't really answered your question. I, I think you just got to be you just got to be open. You got to be open, and you just got to you just got to. Um, blow away any preconceived ideas that you have about what service is and what hospitality is and think about if you can apply things that make people's lives better, how do you apply that in a, in a hotel setting? But like we're trialling some steamers now in some wardrobes around, you know, they're, um, a, a portable steamer that, that completely refreshes suits overnight. Yep. Um, it's just about, yeah, just being open-minded about how, how you can take tech advancement and make the guest experience better yes yeah totally um and i think that's one of the issues i mean pre-arrival checking is is something that i've been preaching about for a long time and i know still some hotelers i talk to are like no you know checking is is the most important you know it's the first contact we have with the guest you you can't it cannot be you know you can't take away the face-to-face -face aspect um, but my view is you can use technology before the guest arrives so that when they do arrive, it is actually a face-to-face. -face. It's not, can I please have your driver's licence and credit card and can you sign yeah. your information card? It's like, welcome, Mr. Boys. We're expecting you. They've got your driver's licence. You know, they've got a photo that you took of yourself. They've cross-referenced it. They literally just give you the key. Hopefully by then they know that you're actually been there before, so they're not going to embarrass themselves by asking if it's your first stay. And they're literally just going to say, "Is you know, have you got any questions? Is there anything you can do? You know, why are you here? You know, is it for Pride Week? Is it for whatever? You know, make sure you check out such and such. To me, mm -hmm. that is what hospitality is. Nobody, I think, you know, joins a front desk team to, um, you know, to spend three or four minutes typing into the property management system when they could be having a conversation with a guest. And, and that's, you know, I remember my time on reception, that's when I became alive, when I'd have a conversation with a guest, you know, the mechanics of checking them in, that's neither here nor there really. Yeah, that's probably that's probably right. Um, and if you had pre-check-in, you know, you could even move the arrival experience to the driveway, to the front door, like, Front yep. reception desk for, for some people create this angst, don't they? Am I going to get stuck queuing? Am I, how long, I haven't got time to wait. Uh, like we've all got our own impressions of what it is to check in or check out of a hotel. Yeah. The more you can blow that away with um, other ways of doing things and, and then finding ways to overlay service, you know. Um, yeah, I, I think that's, that's, that's important. And I always say it's, um, you know, you've got to offer the guest choice. If the guest wants to check in traditionally, then of course. 
But if, you know, my, my wife hates checking in. She's, she's never checked in. She's always like, you go and do that. I'll sit here with the kids or I'll do something else and then just come back when you've got the key because, it, I don't know, it just irritates her, that whole process. And, uh, yeah, so I think it is, it is coming down to, to that offering the guest choice really. You know, we, we talk a lot about personalisation and it's a given. You know, we talked, you know, like Netflix, you know, they keep putting up to you because you watch this show, then this show. And, you know, they're pretty good at actually predicting something that you would like. And I think we need to probably get a little bit better at that in hotels. Yeah, how good is that? I mean, that's in, that is incredible. That's clever. It, it's super clever. And, it, you know, and, and you mean audio, audio books, Audible do the same for me. You know, they're like, you like that book or you read that book. How about this one and this one? And, you know, I will actually get more audio books because of the fact they are recommending them as well. And with audio books, you are actually paying for them. Whereas Netflix, you know, you've, you've got your monthly subscription. So the fact that they recommend doesn't actually mean more in more revenue for them. I suppose Spotify, it's- Spotify, you just pick a song in the morning in the car and it builds a playlist around that song. That's an absolute cracker of a playlist. It's true. How does it do that? That's incredible. That is incredible. And so we need to get like that in hotels. It's like, you know, rather than a hotel sending me information about golf because I've never played golf, I've never had time, I've never had yeah. information. A bit more, as you say, predictive and and preempt. Um, that's exciting. That's yeah, exciting. yeah. Um, Scott, is there an emerging um, trend in the industry that sort of either excites you or makes you anxious? I suppose makes you nervous. Is there something in the future that positive or negative? Uh, positive or negative? I think we've developed. I think I would. We probably already already had it. I think we've we've certainly enhanced our ability to be creative, innovative, and resilient, yeah. and that's exciting. Yeah, the quality of people is just incredible, and that's going to mean a really great era of great hoteliers and great hotels. Uh, I, I, I'm talking of great hotels, how far hotel design has come and focus on quality food and beverage outlets yep. and just the quality of amenity. It's just world class. Like I look at some of the hotels that we've opened in the last couple of years and opening, they are extraordinary hotels. Yep. Um, and as a hotelier, you just go far out. These are good. Um, that's exciting. Um, I think, And I think our guests, because it's been taken away from them, I think our guests understand the importance that hotels play and what it is to stay in a hotel and there's a greater appreciation. So you put, you put those three things together, the quality of, te- the quality of teams, the yep. quality of hotels and the appreciation of guests, like happy days, happy days. Yep. And, probably, and probably also finally, fourthly and, and, and equally as important, the appreciation of owners. Of, of good team members, good guests, and, and they repay that them back in that full circle kind of way with quality amenity. You know, like it's a beautiful ecosystem of everyone really appreciating each other, and that's that's super cool. What's what's a worry? Oh, what concerns me? I think the current economic environment is a bit of a worry, and and a worry so far as it just creates uncertainty and. I'm I'm very confident in everyone's ability to cope with it, but the uncertainty on the back of endless uncertainty that we've been experiencing, it's it's just a bit, it's a bit too much too soon. We're not ready for it. (laughs) And we just want some, we just want some smooth sailing and some clean air, but we haven't got it. So that's okay. I mean, that's, everyone take it in their, in their stride, but I suppose it does raise a broader concern just about how everyone's doing and is everyone okay? And, yeah, we need to be very mindful of just what people are going through. And that's that's generally speaking anyway. Um, but I think it's pretty tough for some people. And for a lot of people that work in our environments, um, yeah, I think, I think they're doing it reasonably tough and, and we need to be very mindful of that. Yeah, that, that is a really good point. It's it's come, you know, as you said, on the back of, of the pandemic as we're just starting to really see things we're getting back to some sense of normality and then we have this you know a, a, a twist we just want a bit of a straight run but um 
somebody was describing life the other day a bit like a maze and I, and that analogy really hit home with me because you do have these good stretches and then all of a sudden you hit upon a wall and you've got to work out you know you got to back track a little bit to work out how to get out of it but generally and I think it was on one of your podcasts with Grant where you talked about um obviously hotel teams and hotel management or the have come out of the pandemic with much greater skills, um, cost management, you know, um, appreciation of teams, as you said. So, you know, there is that truth that, you know, sometimes we have to go, go through hard things to actually, you know, grow. And I think that is where we are now. I, I think we've actually, we're going to come out the other side, well, we have come out the other side um, as a stronger industry, which is a wonderful thing. Yeah, we, we have. And we have, I think we all appreciate each other a lot more too, which is which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Scott, I suppose one final question. Um, if we look ahead maybe three years, five years, and ten years, what are, do you what do you think are the significant sort of changes that we're likely to see? And is there anything that we should be doing now to sort of get ready for that change? Uh, so let's talk about the human interface. So what's going to change three, five, ten years? Our guests will become far more sophisticated uh, when it comes to tech and expectations around tech. Mm. So we will need to move with the times. Um, if you think about the in the in home experience and just how good it is now, and that's going to further evolve, that puts that does put pressure on the in room experience. Yeah. So we do need to be mindful of of that i think our team members because they're going to have so much access to information they're going to grow really quick so we're going to have to make sure that we we keep pace with opportunities and we don't lose good people from the industry yep we need to make sure that the more you know things like the the check-in pre-arrival and the ability the more ability there is to not talk to people We'll need to make sure that when people do choose to talk to us, we have got the skills to be able to have that conversation. Yep. Um, so it's it's natural in a world that's moving more and more digital that you lose the skill of being able to talk face to face. But we'll need to make sure we maintain that skill set. Yep. Uh, I think there'll be there there will be pressure on on some of the supply chain cost lines, but. That might be a that might be a short term issue that we can move through reasonably quickly. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited about the role that AI could play. Yep. In our, in our industry, and I do think that we could, if we if we grab everything that every opportunity as it presents as an industry, I do think we can become a a uh, a player when it comes to asset class alongside commercial and residential in capital cities i really think that hotels can be equal with um commercial and resi as best use um there's a couple of things that are working in our favor yeah that that if we just really harness that um that could be really exciting yeah yeah i I picked that up from your podcast with grant as well and i'd never thought of that um and it does make sense you know as we now have work from home and hybrid work you know that commercial office investment space is is no longer as attractive as it used to be, right? Whereas hotels are always evolving, um, and I think there's a need. And and you know, I even though I've got this very strong passion for technology, I don't believe that technology, you know, is the solution to every problem. And I see technology technology's role is to support your team you know allowing them to be to be more face to face really you know and i i can never see that change in hospitality i see you know we talk about robots they might be out the back you know in the kitchen or vacuuming or something um allowing that staff member to actually have you know face to face interaction and that could be you know probably a, a five star property there might be more robots in an economy property, but there will always be someone there to talk to. And I think that's what differentiates us from the other sort of accommodation places where you just go and you, you know, you rent someone's room or whatever. Um, we have got people, we have got 
the experience that, you know, we are human beings, um, a tribal, you know, we love to connect with other human beings and, and, and that's what the hotel industry has got going for it. Yeah, we've deployed a number of robots through our network and they're mainly in the night audit um, processing functions. Yep. And that's that's all about efficiency. That's not about an accuracy. It's not about mm. replacing um, people at all. In fact, yep. we, haven't, we haven't replaced any uh, person with a robot. Yep. Um, but what it does do, it gives us the ability then to you know, do night audit in half the time. You could do it at 6 p.m. in the evening with a robot doing all the processing work and you can just focus then on the overnight shift and servicing guests and dealing with emergencies, security checks. Um, so it just it just reappoints you um, in different ways, but it doesn't actually doesn't actually replace um, people. It makes you more accurate. Uh, yeah. Makes you more efficient. It gives you flexibility then on how you manage the business, but it doesn't actually take away from the fact that a, a really good person is always going to be required to provide service to another really good person. It hundred percent, hundred percent. Scott, thank you so much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me on your show. And uh, yeah, I, it's always great to speak to you. And thank you for the service that you provide us as well. You you do keep us informed and. You keep us up to speed and, um, yeah, I really appreciate your passion for the industry and, uh, and for tech, but, but more broadly the industry. It's, um, it's always nice to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Scott.